Hello everybody, Dylan Schnazy here from Study Presence. I am going to be doing a 12 part series on the principles of permaculture. I wanted to discuss this because I, I don't I don't think I've formally talked about this before and I feel it's really important for for people to understand what permaculture is and how to use it in their in their lives. And I'm gonna so I'm gonna be doing the the 12 principles first. Because I want I want you guys to understand what permaculture is all about before I talk about the let's say the prime directive and the three ethics. So if I if I give you something that you can understand first, the when I when I do a video on the prime directive and the three ethics, it'll it'll make more sense. So the first the first principle of permaculture is observe and interact. And so what that means is taking a look at uh, your systems, your life, you know, raising kids, cooking, whatever whatever it is for you and when you observe something in your life or in systems that you make think about it and understand if that was uh, a net positive or a net negative for example today or recently We've been putting our rabbits on pasture, which is what everyone else does. So why not, why not us? And so we had put them in new hutches that had, they were, I think an inch by two inch mesh on the bottom. And so when I woke up today, we had, we had six rabbits out there last night and we had two rabbits in there today. So they had four of them got out. So for us, going on pasture isn't working for us. We'd have to spend a lot of time understanding the right setup. And honestly, it's one more thing that we have to think about doing in the morning, going out and making sure they have water, food, and then moving them to new grass. So we've, we've observed that with little supervision and not the right setup, they can escape. And so we don't, we don't have time to think of, to set up a system for pasturing rabbits. And that's not, that's not what we're about. That's not our goal. And so after observing, observing that phenomenon we're going to interact by saying hey we're not gonna we're not gonna put pastured rabbits in our system we're just gonna we're gonna put them in their hutches like normal and we'll bring the, the forage and the fodder to them so that that's what works best for our life and how much time we can devote to them right now uh, another thing that that we've observed recently is I have to travel every now and then for work and so that puts a lot of burden on Ashley to take care of the kids and do chores and so it was about two hours of time that elapsed between when the chickens have, should have gotten fed and when they got fed during, during a, a recent work trip and so these impatient chickens weaseled their way through a fence that divides the chicken run and the garden, and they went in and ate a bunch of pepper plants. So one way that you could interact with that situation is to build a tighter fence. But what we've also noticed is when I'm gone, and when Ashley has to do the chores, that she doesn't like chickens. 
and that's okay. They aren't very smart. When you go in there, they like try to peck your feet and they fly up at you. And the other thing that we've noticed is they take, they require a lot of food. And that's one thing that we want to get away from is having animals that require grain because grain is expensive. It's something that we have to depend on outside of our farm. And so what we're, what we're moving towards is having less chickens here and more ducks because we've noticed that the ducks eat on their own. I barely feed our barnyard mix of ducks and the chocolate ducks, I give them just a little bit at night just so that they go back to their home. Plus, the chickens require an insane amount of grain during the winter, and we, we don't wanna foot the bill for that. So, so we will be moving clo uh, more towards ducks. On the business side of things, we've noticed that now bear with me, I'm gonna to try to do this one-handed. That's not gonna work. Let's see if I can bucket water. There we go. Did it. Okay. On the business side of things, we've noticed that trying to produce food for other people, we don't we don't have a lot of people knocking down our door to let's say buy pastured chicken or even meat rabbits. We, we have a few dedicated customers, but that was, uh, that was in a, uh, during a program that we started when we, were, when we were starting the farm. So what, what we've noticed, so we've observed that we don't get a lot of customers that are looking for food but our airbnb has taken off and so what that tells us is we need to focus on the hospitality part of the business and on ash's business so that that forces us to take a look at various parts of our life and ask okay, is this directly impacting the hospitality business? Or is this directly impacting uh, our doula business? And then, then make, the, make the changes. Make, do the necessary steps to put us in a better spot for, for both of those business ventures. And then another leg of our business that we've seen kind of taper off is events and education. We're, we're hoping that these take off. The, we, have to, we have to reconfigure the events because the last event that we did, which was a barn dance, and don't get me wrong, it was a lot of fun, but it took, it took kind of a heavy toll on our family just from a logistics standpoint and the sensory inputs, we were like, passed out for a couple days after that just we have we have to improve the systems of uh of the barn dance so so that that tells us that we have to take a take a step back from the barn dances and the events and say okay how can we do these smarter so that we we can continue to offer this in the future so you'll, you'll be seeing uh, more details uh, from us on that. Okay, you guys aren't hungry. Anybody else? I'll take you guys out to the garden to uh, look at some other things that we've observed. 
Okay. You guys are good. And the quail are good. Okay. Let's go put the ducks away. So let's go look at the garden. <clears throat> so in the garden, one observation that I've taken is that uh, behind the racking house here, it gets a lot of shade. And especially at night, yeah, this, <laughs> we have a bathtub in our garden. <laughs> so this bathtub, is gonna be a worm bin for compost worms. So I've put it here uh, very strategically. I've, I've first observed that it gets a lot of shade so it won't cook the worms. I've observed that we want it next to our garden so that the, the compost from the worms and the worm juice which would come out of this hole right here. We'll put a bucket under it and then uh, apply that right to the right to the uh, the crops here. So so by observing let's say this homestead, observing the land uh, or observing your lifestyle, you can make better choices. that help with, uh, let's say, lower energy, uh, or making, making something easier, making something fit, fit in better with your life. So in between now and the next time I make a video, take a look at, at your life and even just, just start observing things. Uh, what, what does it look like on your way to work? How does, how does food taste? How, how does the how does food look what is uh, <laughs> what are the shape of the clouds on your way home from work observe when the Sun is setting is the Sun still up when I'm getting home from work another another thing I like to do when we have let's say kids over that, that play with our kids I sit down with them and have them close their eyes and they tell me what they hear. And then I ask them, do you, do you like what you hear or do you not like what you hear? So do you, do you like the sound of the birds chirping? Do you not like the sounds of the tractors going by? These are all things that you can interact with. So if you like, for the kids, if they like the sound of the birds, then the interaction would be how do I how do I bring more birds near me to my property or to my parents' house in the case of the kids so that I can listen to things that I like. Or if it's like the sound of the tractor that I discussed, what things can you do to block out the sound of the tractor? Maybe not being there when the tractor is there. Or on our, in our case, we planted fodder trees and willows on the border to cut, cut the, uh, the noise of a tractor, for instance. So let me know what you observe in your life. Put it in the comments below and I'll catch you on the next permaculture principle, which I believe is catch and store energy. I'll have to make sure I got that right. See you guys.